So good morning everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, welcome to a very cold spring morning in the Netherlands. It's the end of March uh, at the moment. Don't know when this video is going to be released, but uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those mornings where I was hoping for a little bit of fog, but it's actually a little bit of haze. Uh, it might turn into fog, you know, if I just blow out my air, like I can just see that it takes a really long time before the hot air is uh, going away. So maybe when the sun is rising, the temperature is rising a little bit, we will still have a couple of those ground fog appearing here. That would be nice. But uh, yeah, nice area. Uh, you might have noticed that I'm using the 150 to 400. I just mounted it. Uh, every year I come here, I'm always surprised about uh, deers running across this field here. So I decided to put the big one on and hopefully uh, when those deers are crossing, which happens every year, I can catch one. So uh, you will see this year it won't happen now that I'm prepared. But yeah, that's that's life. But uh, yeah, just just look around here. You have these beautiful open fields here. And you can see that there is a little bit of a haze in the background. And all this foreground is completely soaking foggy ground here. So you can see it's sort of a swamp area. So it's almost impossible to walk there uh, without any uh, wellies. So, uh, and it's also not allowed. You know, the maintenance here, they are very keen on giving you fines for leaving the path in this area for getting early. So uh, hopefully I'm all right. I'm not gonna, gonna, gonna go off the path here. There's no need for it. So uh, why this area? First of all, for landscapes, if there's a little bit of fog coming, it's really nice. Uh, if there's no fog, it's a little bit of a struggle. But also a lot of birds, deer, and of course, little butterflies. I don't know, maybe I'm a little bit early uh, for this time of year, but uh, we will just see what we can find today. Hopefully at least a nice day of photography. So the first image of the day, uh, let me show you here on the video footage uh, what I'm recording at the moment. You see it's not much, there's not much color in this image, but maybe when the sun is going to rise, it's going to come from the side into this image. And I just like this tree, it's standing way before uh, that background, that backdrop tree is there. And it just looks, uh, looks nice. No leaves on it yet, it's still a couple of weeks too early, but yeah, I think I might turn it into black and white eventually. My frame is going to be a little bit wider than this. So this is a 3x2, um, sorry, 16x9, but also a 3x2. I just never like that in a portrait oriented shot. I much rather prefer a 4x3 shot or 3x4 actually if you're talking about portrait shots. Uh, when the shots are a little bit wider, uh, I think it's, it suits a portrait shot hearing some kind of bird here, don't know what it is. But uh, yeah, uh, that's what I'm trying to do. So this is the first shot and I just tried to get those layers in on top there. And I am just waiting. I hope you can see it when I turn the camera around. Let's turn you up a little bit. You can see that there's a nice patch of this cloud rolling towards my scene. That's actually what I'm waiting for because there is some nice red light on that cloud and I'm hoping I can use that piece in the top of my portrait shot here. So uh, yeah, just a little wait, maybe two, three minutes, then it will be there and I will take the shot and hopefully it will be at least something. So uh, yeah, don't think that fog is gonna happen at least yet, but maybe when the sun is up. So uh, yeah, at least one shot in the pocket, not world class, but I like it, a little bit moody, atmospheric absolutely worth uh, taking a shot at. So right now the sun is rising above the tree line just on the left of the trees that I'm photographing. 
And I'm just hoping for a beautiful sight light on those trees that I'm watching at the moment. And there's one, it's a different tree than the one that I was photographing earlier. I've walked maybe 20 meters further, uh, hoping that I could catch that first sunlight on that tree. So I'm just waiting for the sunlight to, <laughs> to hit this scene. I think it will be a really nice atmosphere. So uh, yeah, just waiting on that. And I can just see that the image is lighting up on the back of the camera. So uh, let me show you if this is going to work. I think it does, but you see, this is the scene that I'm photographing at the moment. So for me, it's all about this tree. And hopefully when that sunlight hits, the background is a little bit foggy. So this tree will pop out more from the background. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm hoping <laughs> to happen, but I'm not quite sure if it's going to be happening. So uh, yeah, just going to wait for a minute. Then uh, when the conditions are perfect, I'm going to take this shot and uh, I think it's, uh, it's going to be a pretty nice shot. So I guess there's a first time for everything. Uh, I turned the camera a little bit to the left because there is a group of trees with some nice light behind it, some fog that's lighting up. So it's really atmospheric and those dark trees just pop out of this image. And what I was thinking is I want to include a little bit of the sky, but the sky is of course very bright. Now this is the OM1 Mark II. Uh, and it has a live neutral density filter, a uh, graduated one. So I've just programmed it and it's actually really nice. So let me try to show you on the back of the camera. So I just activated it and you can see there is a line here. So I am using, so let me show you, uh, a GND8. So you can adjust here the, the strength of the filter. You can make the edges soft or hard. Uh, you can all choose about that. So when you get into it, there is a line which you can move up and down to position where you want this filter to happen. And then this, I rotated it even. You can rotate it all the way around. You can see, you can even put it upside down. So it's really nice, but I can do it like this made a little of an angle in it to suit that uh, uh, tree line there and then just pushing the shutter to make sure I'm not overexposing that light on top. So this is it, <laughs> first shot with the GND filter and the sun just disappeared behind a big cloud so I'm gonna have to wait for a little while for it to appear again. It gives me a little bit of time to go and search for those butterflies. I'll leave the camera here, no one around. So uh, I'm going to see if I can find some of these butterflies. And uh, yeah, hopefully <laughs> some nice light after this. So I walked a little bit uh, further to the front of the nature reserve and the most beautiful trees are on this side. But I'm not quite sure if I've got too close, you know. Right now all those trees are sticking above that tree line that was in the back earlier. But I don't know if that is as aesthetic as I would have hoped it to be. So there is one nice image here. I'll try to show you 
you see this group, first group of trees, the sun is coming straight through them. And you can see the shadows of these trunks in the field down here. And I'm only isolating the lower part of, this, of these trees, these five trees standing together and just grabbing that as a group with that beautiful backlight. And due to the light coming in from behind, it just looks like there's a little bit of haze mist behind it, which actually isn't the case. It's just the light hitting the scene, but it looks quite nice. So uh, I just took that image, but I think I'm going to walk back to where I was earlier to photograph that first tree that I was shooting. Uh, I think the sun is up high enough now to hit that tree. Might be nice. Maybe I walked away too early. So uh, <laughs> let's, let's go back and see what we can uh, see what we can do there. I've walked all the way back uh, from where I <laughs> was a little bit earlier uh, and walked back to that first tree that I was looking at and the minute I was looking at it I noticed this large tree here in the front and you can see that there's one branch lower branch with a specific shape in it which I somehow got attracted to so I looked at it and I was thinking what if I can shoot the first tree with that big tree in front and just keep that tree underneath that shape in the branch so started to walk around a little and put the tripod up as high as i can possibly go so it's almost above me uh, and i'm 191 so uh, it's about almost two meters high here but uh, i think i like the scene and you can see that i'm just using this tree in that gap up here in that that branch the only problem is that there is a little bit of the skyline included in the frame which makes it difficult in terms of overexposure so what i'm actually doing um, and it's going to be a quite a hard shot in post processing i'm going to make a focus stack at first so of this first tree over on the left and the small tree in the back and then i'm going to bracket these images so every time that i make a bracket I have to focus uh, on the different uh, positions so uh, it might be ending up maybe eight shots that I have to add together in terms of lighting and then add those shots together with the focus tag shots but if it works it might be an interesting and uh, nice image so uh, gotta try that uh, but yeah I just really like it I like these these little looks through different trees so uh, yeah taking this shot uh, not much going on actually I'm, I'm taking in the f8 to get as much in focus but because I'm taking the focus tag it actually doesn't really matter so uh, yeah very nice so this is the shot that I'm taking hopefully this is gonna work out So I just figured that the microphone was off in the last clip, so uh, the Osmo itself records audio also, so I hope it was okay, but uh, turned it back on again and I actually did the complete opposite. I'm still in the exact same spot, but I put the tripod almost as low as possible now with a large telephoto lens on. And what that does, if you look at the front here, you see all those little... Uh, uh, drops of water being lit up by that low sun on the grass in front so what I'm actually doing is now I'm positioning that small tree in the back on the left top of my image and then all these grasses in front with those uh, water drops on them as a foreground 
and I'm doing a focus tag once again. So one on the tree in the back, one in the mid ground, and one in those, uh, yeah, how do you say it? <laughs> those drops of water in the front here. And I think it's going to be a really nice uh, image. So uh, yeah, quite a, quite a lot of post processing in the images from this morning. I think uh, a lot of uh, brackets, a lot of focus tags. So uh, yeah. That's always difficult, you know, when you're when you're out here and doing this kind of photos. You don't see the result immediately on the back of the camera. So you have to be quite sure that the material that you're trying to shoot is sufficient enough to 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 do the job in post-processing. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm actually try, trying to do here at the moment. So uh, yeah, I just hope that uh, that all those images are right you know in focus no camera shakes in between all that stuff because you if you did you just ruin a complete set of images and yeah once again if you're doing uh, images like that you know always make sure that before you start a set of photos just cover the lens with your hand uh, like this take a shot so you have a dark frame take your series of shots and take another one it's much easier in Lightroom to see which uh, groups belong together so uh, oh, uh, yeah that's the advice that I'm giving so I'm gonna take this shot and uh, hopefully it will be uh, it will be worth uh, shooting So you might have noticed that I am using some different gloves that I'm using over the past uh, two months. Um, I was using the Tinden version of a Valorat photography gloves and they contacted me uh, after Sweden and they said, so how uh, did you like those uh, gloves? And I said, yeah, I really like them. But going into spring in the Netherlands, uh, temperatures are raising a little bit and these gloves were very, very warm. So if your temperatures are between zero and uh, plus 10 degrees Celsius, uh, yeah, then you can use those gloves, but with, for me, they were a little bit too warm. So uh, I told them that and they said, well, we have the perfect solution for you. And they sent me this Urbex version of their Valorat photography glove. Once again, you can very easily get your fingers out, little magnets in. Uh, this one only doesn't have the heat pad uh, here on the side, but they are just really comfortable. You can very easily feel the buttons on your camera, even without getting your fingers out of the uh, glove um, yeah just really nice comfortable for these temperatures spring mornings in the Netherlands so uh, there's a link in the description if you're interested in the Valorat photography gloves um, if you're not then not but uh, this is them link in the description So I don't know if this is a problem that I am only facing as a photographer, but I was just, I just came around the corner here, looked in this direction and look at that beautiful light with this lane running to the back. And like I said, I don't know if this is my problem, but I always feel with shots like this, that it's too easy, you know? I, I don't know, it's a really nice atmosphere, beautiful leading line with that, that path running through the back really easy to separate those trees so it's a really nice shot but somehow this doesn't do it for me anymore i don't know what it is and it might be stupid so of course i'm taking these shots but it just doesn't feel that good anymore and you can see that there are some light rays appearing a little bit of fog is coming up here uh, on the side so what I was hoping to happen is actually happening at the moment due to the rising sun. So uh, yeah, there might be some fog coming around after all, just a little bit. But this atmosphere is just really nice, but also <laughs> really, really simple. So uh, yeah, maybe I'm just uh, too hard on myself, you know. So taking this shot and then I'm gonna walk in this direction, see if I can find something interesting on that side.
So unfortunately, I didn't find any butterflies. Uh, there were three buzzards flying constantly above us. So eventually I got the big telephoto one and caught a couple of shots. I hope they are in focus. Uh, not quite sure about that, but I will show them after this clip uh, if they worked out. But uh, yeah, still a couple of nice images, I think, uh, with that, that moody morning light. Uh, yeah, maybe in a couple of weeks those butterflies will be around here more. So I will probably be back here. But at least it was a nice morning to be out, you know, it's, the temperature is rising a little. Uh, yeah, nice warm sunlight, nice colors. You can see all those uh, trees are starting to get their leaves again. So uh, yeah, spring is definitely arriving and uh, yeah, that's a good thing because I'm definitely looking forward to spring. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, once again, hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget, please push that thumbs up button and leave a comment and there's a subscribe button underneath this video. If you haven't already, then please push the subscribe button. You will massively help this channel to grow. It's all about landscape and nature photography uh, usually. So uh, yeah, that's it. So I hope to see you on the next video. Uh, no idea what I'm gonna do next. So uh, I'm just gonna look at it day by day and decide uh, what weather suits, what area, and uh, yeah, just see what I can uh, find. So see you on the next one. Bye-bye.